All right, so the last thing you have to know about with probability is the binomial theorem. I think that's tested on your boards, but it, uh, you should know about it, but I'm going to show you actually how to do it. So let's say we got our 16 marbles again, 5 of which are red and 11 of which are blue. And we want to take out 4 marbles. And so what we'll do is we'll take a marble out, then we'll put it back in. So we'll take a marble out at random and put it back in. Because remember, we're going to do it with replacement. We're only going to be talking about independent events. That is, the uh, probability of one event does not depend on the probability of another event. They are independent. And so you pull out four mar marbles, and I want to ask you, what is the probability of pulling out two reds and two blues? Well, you might say, that's easy. Two reds, two blues. Now I know the probability of pulling a red out is 5 out of 16, and the probability of pulling out a blue is 11 out of 16. And so we know we want a red and a red and a blue and a blue, and the and means that we multiply each one of these things. So if we multiply all four of those numbers, we get 3025 over 65,536, or 0 0.46, 4.6%. That would be the probability. But it's not that easy, because you know what? There's another way to get two reds and two blues. You could first get a red, then a blue, then a red, then a blue. And there is another way. You could first draw a red, then two blues, then a red, there's actually six ways you could do it. You could get this, or this, or this, or this, or this, or this. And we know each one of these is going using the multiplication rule. We're going to have 5 sixteenths times 11 sixteenths times 5 sixteenths times 11 sixteenths. And we've already calculated that there. So all of them are going to equal this number. And so we're going to need to add all these numbers up, right, because of the OR, the addition rule, says we add all those up. And so when you add all those up, you're going to get 18,150 over 65,536. So that's the probability of getting two reds and two blues. So that was pretty cumbersome and complicated, but there's an easier way to do this. And that's by using binomials. And if you remember, binomials are those things we had learned in algebra, like x plus y squared equals x squared plus 2xy plus y squared once you expand this out. And now you're thinking, yuck, I thought I would never have to remember that again. And don't worry, I'm not going to make you do this multiplication. There's an easier way to do it. And we're going to exploit this binomial theorem to do it. So first thing we're going to say is, in order to do this, we want to have two events. And our two events here have to be independent. And we have two in, uh, independent events. We have pulling a red marble out of this pot and pl pulling a blue marble out of this pot. All right. And the little n here means how many marbles in total are we going to pull out? So before we said we were going to take four marbles out, so we replace this n with the number four. And now I bet you're thinking, there is no way in heck I'm going to be multiplying these polynomials out uh, to the fourth power. That's crazy. And don't worry, I'm not going to ask you to do that. There's a shortcut. But before we figure out that shortcut, we first got to get a little bit geeky. Okay, there's this mathematical construct called Pascal's Triangle. It's named after Blaise Pascal, but he's not the first person to come up with it, but he may have been the first person who popularized it. And what this is, it's a way of arranging a bunch of numbers. And you start with the number 1, and so that consists of the first row. Now for the next row, you're going to add up the numbers that are on top of it. So to fill in these two spaces here, remember it's a triangle, so we got to make it look triangular, you're going to add up the numbers on top of it. So you're going to add up 1 plus, uh, there's nothing here, so 0. 1 plus, 1 plus nothing is 1. And similarly, for the other side, 1 plus nothing is again 1. Now let's go down to the next row. Okay, so this was row 0, row 1, and this is going to be row 2 then. Yes, I know it's weird to call the first row row 0, but don't worry, you'll see why. So now we're going to do the same thing here. So 1 plus nothing equals 1, and if you do it on the opposite side, 1 plus nothing again equals 1. But now for this middle one, we got 1 plus 1, and so we put 2 in there. Okay, so we're going to do it again now. So 1 plus nothing 
equals 1, and then 1 plus 2 equals 3, and then again we have here 2 plus 1, and that equals 3, and here 1 plus nothing, and that equals 1. Now I'm just going to fill in some more rows of this using that same uh, method, but I'm going to just do it quickly so that we can save some time. And you can keep making this triangle as long as you don't run out of time or interest, but you can see this can go on infinitely. Now, what is the use of these numbers? Well, you'll remember that I said I'm not going to make you uh, multiply all of these things out here uh, from our binomials, but uh, I got that shortcut I told you about. And so let's replace this n with 4. And so now we can figure out what the um, answer to this equation is going to be. I'm getting tired of kind of switching between uh, red and blue, so I'm just going to use purple, which is the mix of red and blue to represent these uh, letters R and B. So you already know what the different, uh, the starting values are going to be. You can, you're can you going to have R to the fourth, right? You're going to have a term that has R to the third in it, a term that has R squared, a term that has R to the first, and a term that has R to the zero. Now, r to the 0 is really the same thing as 1, okay? Now, similarly, you are going to have the same thing for the b's, and they just go backwards. So you're going to have a b to the 4, a b to the 3, a b to the 2, a b to the 1, and a b to the 0. So those are the, the, uh, the terms we have here, but what are the coefficients that we put in front of here if we were to add them all, if we were to multiply this up and add everything up? Uh, well, we know that this is 4 here, so we can get the coefficients from Pascal's triangle. So we go to row 4, and we just use these number here, 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. So we would put 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. Now I know you're still thinking, what the heck does this have to do with anything? Now remember the question I asked you previously. What is the probability of getting two reds and two blues? Well that answer is contained right inside this formula. Two reds and two blues. Now we remember what the value for R and B were, right? So we can use these values here now in calculating the probability of getting two reds and two blues in any order. Uh, and so let's plug them in here. And this would be six Remember, 6 times r squared, which is 5 16th squared, and b squared, which is 11 16th squared. And the answer is the exact same as we got before, 18,150 over 65,536. But with this formula, if I had asked you, what is the chance of getting 3 reds and 1 blue, you could calculate that pretty quickly. Or just all blues, or all reds, or one red and three blues, you could do it pretty quickly. Okay, again you say, what? why do I care about marbles? Well, you don't, but let's say you got a family, and this family, they both grew up in big families, and so they want six kids. And for some reason, only known to them, they want two boys and four girls. So our two independent options are boy and girl, and the probability of having a boy is one half at each birth, and at the next birth, it's uh, still one half, and the probability of having a girl is a half. What I mean by independent is if the first child's a boy, that doesn't mean change the probability of the next child being a boy or a girl at all. It's still a half, so we have two independent events. Now, let's use our binomial theorem. We have boy and girl in here, and we know that they want six of them, so let's expand this thing out. So those are all the options for boys. You can either have six boys, five boys, four boys, three boys, two boys, one boy, or no boys. And for girls, you can have either zero girls, one girl, two girls, three girls, four girls, five girls, or six girls. So what are the coefficients that we're going to fill in front of these terms here? Well, we knew we had six. That's the number of kids they wanted. Let's go to row six and put those numbers down in here. That was pretty easy. And now we know that they wanted two boys and four girls. So two boys and four girls. We're going to use this term right here. And 
Let's calculate it now. So we know it's going to be 15 times 1 half, the probability of having a boy, squared, times the probability of having a girl, which is 1 half, to the fourth. And that answer is 15 over 64. And so now you can see how we use Pascal's triangle. So let's see, maybe in, instead it's not uh, boy or girl, but they instead wanted to know what's the probability if we have six kids us, of us having all healthy kids. And there's, because of their genetic uh, makeup, we know that they have a three-quarter chance of having a healthy kid and a one-quarter chance of having a sick kid. So what we do then is we expand again using the binomial theorem. So we, there we have all our H's counting down from six to zero. And in the reverse order, we'll come up with our S's for sick. So we go from six all the way down to zero. And in this case, we use the same number of kids that they wanted six kids, so we'll go to row six and we'll fill in the coefficients. And we know that their question was, we want to know what is the probability of us having all six kids be healthy. And so there are six healthy and zero sick. So let's expand that term then. So we have one times s to the zero. And so s was one-fourth, that's the probability of being sick to the zero, times healthy, the probability of being healthy is three-fourths, uh, and we're going to have that to the sixth, and remember that anything to the zero power is just one. So you tell them that they have an 18% chance of having all six kids be healthy. So this is the binomial theorem. Now I can't imagine that on the boards they're going to test you and make you calculate this but at least understand what goes into it you have to have two independent events in here and so they're going to have their own probabilities associated with them and then how many you're going to uh, pick you're going to put up here it's, that's going to be in your exponent six and when you when you expand it you're going to count all the way down with one term this way and then count all the way down with the other term this way and you know what the coefficients are by using Pascal's triangle. Uh, and that's it. That's the binomial theorem. Watch this video a couple times if you need to. Put comments down below if you need to, if you have any questions. Uh, and, uh, and that's it. All right. Talk to you later.